This is a video on the mixing procedure for the hot pipe coating. BJ is uh, now just taking off the lid. Since the coating has a tendency to settle somewhat, what you'll find when you open it is that you'll have a very cakey type of an appearance on top. Some think that the coating is bad when they open it, but that's not true. As you can see, it's very dry on top. It has a cakey uh, type feel to it, but yet that'll stir quite well uh, using a, a dispersion blade that can be purchased through us. If you, um, you what you're going to need is actually a, a heavy duty type of a drill because of the resistance that you'll get from the coating itself. And as you'll see, that um, you need to hold the, the pail into place as you stir this, otherwise it will tend to spin. And just moving the dispersion blade up and down in a turning type motion will start to loosen that coating and disperse the moisture throughout the rest of the coating. You want to slowly bring it up near the top to be able to pull down that drier part to be mixed in with the rest of the coating. As you can see, BJ is, is uh, pushing the drier part that's up on top back down into the coating so that that way it can be stirred evenly with the rest of it. Now you can see that the coating is beginning to loosen up. And you want to continue to stir until you have a nice fluffy mix. And that's been about three minutes that we've stirred now, and now it's ready to be sprayed. We're going to continue with this using a Tech Spray RTX 1500 made by Graco. That's the machine that we suggest. And BJ is going to pour that into the hopper up top. I believe that hopper uh, holds about between 8 and 12 gallons, actually, all total, but he's going to be putting in the um, hot pipe coating that we stirred up. <clears throat> As you can see, it's still a thick type of a texture, but being very lightweight, it has no problem uh, spraying through this machine. Now he's taken and primed that machine with a little bit of water first to get the flow going, and then he starts the uh, coating right behind that. He'll take in empty, start the machine and empty the water that was put in there first to start the flow into a disposal bucket until he gets a good stream of the hot pipe coating coming out. The type of a gun that he's using is actually a, a flex head uh, pole gun, they, they refer to it as. Uh, we also use this in, in spraying our uh, fire coating in our stucco. There's a different gun that comes with the Tech Spray 1500 uh, that can certainly be used and sprays very well. As you can see, the water is starting to flow out, and then this will soon turn into having the product come out. See it's starting to get thicker. Continue to 
to allow this to flow until you feel like you have a good stream of 100% of the coating coming through. As you can see, once it gets mostly coating coming through, she takes and puts it back into the hopper. A little bit of water is not going to hurt the coating any. It's bringing that back through. You may have to wait for a while to allow that to come through and then adjust your air accordingly so that you get a nice spray coming out. Once you get a nice flow coming through, then you can shut off your gun and you'll be ready to start spraying. BJ is now going to start spraying. This pipe has a heating element in it that, that has uh, around 400 degrees F or 200 C. And as you see, what he's going to do is to put on a very thin coat, about 50 mils thick, as a tack coat first, and then allow that to steam off. Put that evenly all the way around the pipe and then just allow that to steam. If there's areas that are applied too thick, sometimes you'll have bubbles come up. That's not a real problem because the bubbles can be just tapped down a bit and they'll scorch down to the surface. We want to put this this preparation coating on to just kind of sear down and, and, and scorch down to the surface so that we have a nice tight dry foundation. You'll probably want to let this set depending on the temperature that you're running at for somewhere between 5 and 15 minutes until it becomes almost pretty much dry to the touch. You want to watch for the steam coming off of it and once it stops steaming then you can apply the next coating. Is now going to start building the, the coating thickness. And once the tack coat is in place, you can build up thickness fairly quick. The thickness of the coating applied is all going to be determined by the temperature of the pipe and what, your, what the goal is to bring down the exterior temperature. You want to make sure that you get a good even coat all the way around to encapsulate the pipe. You'll find that you'll need to adjust the air pressure that's comfortable for you in your situation. If you have the air pressure up too high, then you'll have a tendency to blow the coating off the pipe. As you can see, this is built up probably close to 400 to 500 mils thick at this point. Then allow that to steam off. If this is sufficient thickness, then leave it as it is, and then you can coat with Supertherm uh, for protective reasons. If you want additional thickness, then you can allow this to, to stop steaming off and then continue to build up your thickness. You want to allow that to totally dry on the surface, totally steam off, allow to dry. Depending on the, the temperature, it will depend on how long that will take to dry. And then after it's dried on the then you can apply your supertherm as a protective coating and then possibly even rust grip or enamel grip over the top of that. Thank you very much.